All right, in continuing, in continuing, we already touched on the Recovery Bible. See if you can get copies of it or if you can get your own copy that was given it out free. Um, even if there's a little nominal fee, it's, 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 it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Because now this is going to help us to explain the fact that these four Gospels, right, and let's put this up here. Let's, let's, let's write. Let's write. Because... Yeah, my Sufuti Joe Chai no room. Hands that don't write don't live. So let's write right here the four gospels, right? Equal pillars. Right? The four gospels equals equals pillars, his majesty teaches for all humanity. Mateos, Marcos, Lucas, and Johannes. You understand? They, they. This is, this is, this is what's very important that these four gospels, you understand, are pillars for all men that are on the earth. But in what sense? Now we've touched on the celestial, the heavenly sense. Now, um, 9/11 or September 11th. A lot of people wonder why there's always every 20 or 30 something, some say 37 or so years. They always wonder why there's some event that happens, some major kind of event, if you look up in history, if you go on the Internet and you look at major events on September 11th, why there's certain type of what seems to be some very curious planned events that happen on 9-11. Now, first of all, what's been suppressed and continually suppressed is that 9-11, usually September 11th is Ethiopia's New Year, except in the case of a leap year. And this year is a leap year. 2011 is a, is a leap year. So it's not going to be on September 11th, but September 12th. And that's a significant um, difference that needs to be noted. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be off. You're going to be offline. You're going to be offline if you're thinking that September 11th this year is, is, uh, is, is, is Addis Ahmed, is Ethiopian New Year, because you're going to be too early. You understand? And being too early is like being too late. You're saying you are off point. You're not on point. So it's important for us to study to show ourselves approved so we are on point and can understand these significances because the Almighty says that the Scriptures is our wisdom in the sight of all the heathen, all the Gentiles, so forth and so on. So some are surprised that there's always some event happening on September 11th every couple of years that seems to be planned by some New World Order elitist some or the other, that's because, especially among the lost sheep, among black folks, because they don't know or refuse to recognize who they are, who they are. They don't know who they, they are still lost sheep. You understand, when the lost sheep have found themselves as Beta Israel and as Israelites, you know what I'm saying, and have studied to show themselves approved and know what's in their root and truth and their fig and their vine, their, their vine and their fig tree, then they really can plant themselves and root themselves in the land of the living. But until then, until such a time, we are passing through this particular state that's known spiritually as Babylon or confusion. You understand? And this, this the Amenta, we're in the Amenta of the West. And the Amenta going from ancient Egypt or the Kemet, the, the Kemet or the Kamite mysteries, the Amenta was the land of hell or the Sheol or the land of the dead, you understand, where the sun basically set, the sun went down. So you remember what was written in, um, over here in Genesis 1 and 14, you understand, about the sun and the moon and the stars? Let's go there again, Genesis 1 and 14. What is written in Genesis 1 and 14? Because Genesis 1 and 14 is God's time. But in the cities and in this state that we are in, we are robbed of God's time because we're moving on man-made time or Gentile time. And Elohim said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to do what? To divide the what? The day from the night. So even in ancient Egypt, they understood this division of the day from the night. Because the West was where the sun went down. So we as the Beta Israel or the Falashas of the West, our, us and our ancestors to us have gone down in this Western land. This is where we were robbed of the knowledge of who we 
are and why we're here and so forth and so on by the spell of Wooly Lynch, by the spell of Wooly Lynchism. And the spell of Wooly Lynchism is still in effect. The COINTEL Pro is an operation of that whole same thing. You know what I'm saying? And if it's true what we have heard about COINTEL Pro and America, the government, the rulers are behind that, as it has been said, then they have damned themselves. Yes, God blessed America when the lost sheep came over here, when we was brought over here in the chains and shackles of chattel slavery. God blessed America. So when we recognize who we are, we recognize how we got there. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to verse 68 shows us the curses for disobedience and the N-word, nigga, 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 nigga. You understand? That right there is that byword that the Almighty says that we will exchange our name as Israel. You understand? And Judah, you understand, for a byword in the sight of all nations, in the sight of all the Gentiles, and that's the nigger word. When you say nigger, you don't think about a white man, an Asian Chinese man, a Hispanic even so much. So, you understand, unless it's a dark skin Hispanic, you understand, then you think of a black man and you think of an ex-slave or one who come from that whole, that whole enslavement, that, 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 that curse for disobedience. So we have to recognize the first lesson is recognizing who you are. You understand, if you were knocked over the head and got a concussion and amnesia, the first thing you want to figure out is, well, who am I? You understand? And, and I, I've had a concussion. I don't know if anybody else had a concussion. You understand? But if anybody else had a concussion and, and you had that kind of, it's the weirdest feeling. It's the weirdest state ever. I mean, it is, it is like being in another world, for real. I don't know if that's what's like when people go on crack or drugs or whatever kind of stuff like that and they lose their mind. But when you have a concussion and you have amnesia and you can't remember who you are, you know what I'm saying? You can't remember. I mean, you're looking at people. You know who they are. You, you know, and, 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 the, and the name won't come out. The word won't come out. It's like for the lost sheep. The name Israel, Beta Israel, Ethiopian. That just won't come out. You understand? Being a Hebrew, it just won't come out of their mouth. They just can't say who they are. They kind of know it already in their heart, but it's like there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect, and it's only our black Lord and Savior and faith in our black Lord and Savior and that grace that saves us in and through our black Lord and Savior. In the name of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, Jesus Christos, that has the power to save us and, and reverse the curse, you understand, and reverse this so-called generational curse that we are under and have been under for 400-plus years. And don't forget the Queen of England, Elizabeth or Lizzie Witch, she came over here when Bush was president for the 400th anniversary of the Jamestown, um, the Jamestown um, um, colony. You understand the first Virginia Jamestown um, colony, and that's the same place that Willie Lynch was talking about some 400 years ago. So she came for the 400th anniversary a couple of years ago. So we are. We are in the iniquity of the Amorites' time. And when you understand the Amorites, that is mother and daughter, that is England and America. England and America is mother and daughter. And France is like the cousin, but also a near relative to that mother and daughter. But England is the mother, and America is the daughter of Babylon, or the virgin daughter. 9-11 symbolized that that virgin daughter got effed. The virgin daughter was F, you understand? And this is what makes them so, in a sense, angry, yet there's a lot of confusion around, around that whole matter. But now what we are resting on is the sure foundations, and it illuminates and sheds light to even that which is in the darkness, you understand, through the study of the Word. Now, it says, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Signs and seasons and days and years. This is why the celestial is so important. But unfortunately, in the cities, we're not able to, we don't know any of that. Yeah, you know, if you grew up in the projects, you don't know what star is, what star from what star, unless you took a particular interest to it and you studied it. But still, you could rarely see it because of all the city lights. And all of that is, is purposeful. You understand? That's, that's part of the, the concrete slave ships. 
You understand the cities and the projects re represent the concrete slave ships that's sailing in the sea of spiritual and mental and psychological captivity. You understand that those concrete slave ships like the Aswad, the Aswad song speaks about. So that being said, and that being said, let's now touch on this recovery, this recovery Bible so we can understand these four pillars. The four Gospels. How are the four Gospels the four pillars? Now, in the Gospel according to Matthew of this Recovery Bible, we want to share a little bit of this. It speaks down here. There's a footnote, right? There's a footnote here. And the footnote, part of the footnote says this. It says that Christos, Christ, or the Messiah, interpreted as the Messiah or the Moshiach, the Moshiach, or the Mashiach, in the Amharic, as the wonderful center of the entire Bible, Christ, even Christ in his kingly character, is all-inclusive, having many aspects, having many faces, many gets, the getzoch, or it's often translated as what it says that God is one, you understand, from our Ethiopic Christian perspective, but he, he has many persons, there are three persons, the persons are not persons as we are people, but the persons are persons in the sense that these are aspects, that God is one, but he has three primary aspects, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's understand this. The New Testament at its beginning presents four biographies to portray the four main aspects of this all-inclusive Christ, of the all-inclusive Christ. Now, when we say Christ, let us not think of it exoterically, but more esoterically. In other words, let's see how it applies to us in the true sense of the the ritit hymenot, or the ritit amin, the ritua hymenot, or the true faith, the orthodox, but without Greek, the non-Greek orthodox Ethiopic faith, which is called the ritua hymenot, or the correct living faith. You understand the correct, for lack of a better word, religion. It's known as Tawahido, the Tawahido. Now, the Tawahido has, a, has the sense of God and man. In other words, we are restored to our divinity through the template of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus, Yeshua HaMoshi. So we can be restored into that divinity that man or the ha Adam, Adam fell from, you understand, through so we are restored into that divinity. So this is the root and the crux of the Tawahido approach to Christianity, which is the true Christian approach to Christianity, the Tawahido, which is called the Ethiopic Church, the roots of the Ethiopic Church. Unfortunately, many Orthodox today have, have, have um compromise themselves and compromise the true Christian faith by a lot of lone, lone ideologies from other churches. In other words, it has suppressed its own indigenous truth and has adopted, for example, the Ethiopian church, a lot of, a lot of uh, Egyptian stuff, you understand, Latter-day Egyptian stuff and Latter-day um, Greek stuff. And the Greek church and the, and the Egyptian church bowed to the papal mystery Babylon church. The Ethiopic church fully never did. And this is one of the reasons for the invasion of Ethiopia in that very prophetic time of 1935, 36 to, to 41 in those years. Now, the New Testament, as we already been mentioning, the Hadith, uh, the Hadith uh, 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 Kidan, or the Burt Hadasha in the Hebrew, at its beginning, this Mejumeria or Berashit represents four biographies to portray the four main aspects of the all inclusive Christ. The Gospel of Matthew, now pay attention to this. The Gospel of Matthew, who may have to write some of this, the Gospel of Matthew testifies that he is that he is the king. The Gospel of Matthew testifies that he is Nigus. You understand? He is Malkot. You understand? Or Melchet. You understand? He is king. The Christ of God prophesied in the Old Testament, in the Belui Kidan, you understand? Who brings the kingdom of the heavens to earth. So what Christ does, he brings this heavenly, the Son, 
You know what I'm saying? He brings it down now to earth. You know what I'm saying? He brings the heavens, the, the kingdom, the governance of the heavens to earth. Now, the Gospel of Mark, it tells us that he is the servant of God laboring for God faithfully. He is the servant. So the Mark's Gospel, let, let's, let's get this right here. Let's write um, Matthew. Matthew says he is the king, right? Mark says that he is a servant, right? He's the servant, right? The servant of God, right? So let's go on to find out what 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 what, what Luke says. What Luke says. Um, so so Mark's account is that he's a servant of God, laboring faithfully for God, laboring faithfully for God, or laboring for God faithfully. Mark's account is most simple. Mark's account, the servant, the body account is most simple. For a servant does not warrant. A detailed record. A servant doesn't need a whole bunch of detail. Tell them what to do. Just do it. Oh, why are you going to do that? No, you're a servant. Just do it. You understand? But now the Gospel of Luke presents a full picture of him as the only proper and normal man who ever lived on the earth. As such a man, and maybe you say as such a black man, he is the savior of mankind. So now in Luke, we have him as man, you understand, but more as the Savior, right? The Savior of humanity, the Savior of mankind, of man and mankind, should we say. The Gospel of Johannes, or the Wengel of Johannes, it unveils him as the Son of God, the very God himself, who is life. He is life to God's people. He is life to God's people. But to those people who are the children of disobedience, he is death. You understand? He is joy to God's people. But for those who are children of disobedience, the children of darkness, he is sadness. That's what they find studying the Bible and biblical things. And even if you find that you have that in your spirit, then pray. That's the main thing, to pray to the God and Father of our black Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, that that be lifted, that, that curse, that, 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 that blockage be lifted from you, that you can overcome that, that um, hindrance in your spirit. You understand that it can be illuminated why and where that came about. So now we have John, right? John, he is the son of G. He is the son of the G. He is the son of the Godfather. He is the son of he's the son of God. You understand? So this is very important for us to now understand the breakdown of these four pillars. That in Matthew Mateos he is Negus, in Marcos he is servant, Baria, in Luke he is Medanit, he is savior, he is savior of man. In John he is Yegzialiher Lich. He is the Bain Ha Elohim. He is the son of God. You understand? He is the Son of God. Now, it goes on to say that among the four Gospels, Matthew and Luke have a record of genealogy. Now, this now gets into another very important point about the genealogy. Mark and John uh, do not, do not testify to that. To testify that Yeshua is king, the Christ of God, prophesied in Old Testament, Mateos needs to show us the antecedents and the status of this king. In other words, well, what is his lineage? To prove that he is the proper successor to the throne of David, just as we can prove that Negus and Negesk, Edomawi, Haile Selassie, he is the proper successor, you understand, to Minulik, you understand, to Kedamawi Minulik, to David II, to Baina Lechem, to Ibn Hakim, you understand? To prove that he is the proper successor to the throne of David, which is established, in Ethiopia, to prove that Yeshua is a proper and normal man from the divine template, a normal man. Lucas needs to show the generations of this man to attest that he is qualified to be the savior of humanity. For the record of a servant, Marcos does not need to tell us his origin. So from a servant status perspective, he doesn't need to tell us his origin. You understand? To unveil that Yeshua is the very God, 
neither does John need to give us his human genealogy. This is why we don't find human genealogy in Johannes's, um, Johannes Wengel. Rather, he declares as the word of God. He declared that he is the word of God. He is the very God in the Barashit, you right, in the beginning, in the Bermejamaria. Now, the kingdom of which Christ is the king, mainly now we're dealing with this. So this is interesting, too. Let's note this right here, that he is king, right, and he is Christ. This is what Mateos, the first gospel, which is, you know, one acts about discipleship, and perhaps this will be a discipleship study here. This is very important for discipleship. So stay tuned, and we're going to continue with the, 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 the next part of this. So hold, hold on. Shalom Rastafari.